Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid Debate, with your speaker, Andrew Irumba Katusa. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the edition of the Pan-African Pyramid show here at Fairway Hotel. This is the People's Pan-African Parliament that sits at Fairway Hotel every Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. And the recorded version runs on Saturday from 4 5 p.m. on NBS Television, our partner sponsor. And of course, we are, we are also here at Fair Hotel, our partner sponsor. My, uh, my name is Andrew Rumba Katsabe, your speaker. And I'm glad I've been joined by very distinguished members of our parliament here that happens every Friday. Uh, number one is, uh, I think, in, uh, for the whole of last year, I didn't see him. I'm seeing him now for in this year, Feb. Professor David Kasuti from Kiambogo University, the senior lecturer at Kiambogo University. If you could give him a round of applause. Uh, Comrade Daniel Garama is a uh, uh, chairman of Pan-African Movement, Uganda chapter. And uh, he also moved with his admin here, Mr. Balenzi. is here, the admin of Pan-African Movement. Thank you for coming, sir. Comrade Lisafri Thomas Mutatina. Is from France. He's a, 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 vet, a, a, a researcher and a freelance journalist. He was once a very powerful man in Ginger. <laughs> he was representing the president of this Republic of, of, of Uganda. Comrade Eric Sapa, former RDC of Ginger City. He's here now. Anyway, Comrade, the Southern African Development Community, Sadak, call it Sadak Mission. The Democratic, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo was deployed on 15th December 2023, that is last year, in December, to support the government of the DRC to restore peace and security in the eastern region of that country, which, was, which has actually witnessed an increase in conflict instead and instability caused by the resurgence of armed groups. So this group, when they went there, instead of uh, Solving a problem. I am now seeing they are accepting that actual problems are increasing. The deployment of SADA. The deployment of this very SADA was approved by the extraordinary SADA summit of the heads of state and government held in Windhoek, Republic of Namibia, on 8 May 2023 as a regional response to address the unstable and deteriorating security situation prevailing in the Eastern DRC. As part of the of, of the SAM, summit DRC, a SADAC regional force from the republics of Malawi, South Africa, and the United Republic of Tanzania, and elements of the DRC armed forces are working with the Congolese army, the forces armies, the La Republic Democratic, the Congo, FADAC, in fighting armed groups operating in the eastern part of the DRC. The presence of this very organization demonstrates the commitment of SADAC member states to supporting the DRC in efforts to achieve lasting peace and stability and ultimately create an enabling environment for sustainable development and prosperity. The deployment of some DRC is in accordance with the principle of collective self-defense and collective action outlined in the SADAC Mutual Defense Pact 2003. The pact emphasizes that any armed attack perpetrated against one of the state's parties shall be considered a threat to regional peace and security and shall, and shall, uh, meet, and shall be met with immediate collective action. The first commander for the SAM DRC is Major General uh, Mon, uh, Monwa, Monwabisi Diakopu from the Republic of South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw when Sadak was coming in, the East African regional forces were actually leaving the place. But you could say this is more a homegrown army, and they are fighting a more homegrown problem. East African standby force. Now, they failed, let's say, and they left. Now, Sadak from West Africa is coming in 
Do you see a possibility of SADA deployment in Eastern Congo really succeeding where the ESC uh, troops fail? If they fail and SADAC is to succeed, what are the reasons? Why did ESC fail where SADAC is probably going to succeed if it may? What is the reason? Do you see, do you say that the ESC soldiers, the East African standby force soldiers, collected from the East African member states, are, are less trained than the West Africans? Are there some problems that are within? Like when you see the problem between Rwanda and Burundi, could those problems make part of the reasons as to why the ESC could fail? Because some of these, the, the ESC leaders, some of them are not seeing eye to eye. Could all those issues contribute to the failure of ESC where Sadak is going to succeed? I am saying he's going to succeed because I'm a Pan-African, we are always hopeful. And I hope uh, Comrade Rugarama will agree with me here. So let us assume that they are going to succeed. What are those challenges that you think could have led to the failure of ESC and therefore SADAC has catered, uh, catered for those challenges and they are able to, uh, to, to uh, peruse through these challenges and actually produce finally uh, a product in Congo called peace. Because that's the ultimate proper, uh, product we are looking at in Congo. Can Sadak produce that product, the ultimate product called peace? Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan African Parliament, the Pan African Pyramid debate with your speaker, Andrew Irumba Katusa. So, I told our friends, these are the powerful friends of ours, I've even said it publicly. When it comes to defending this country that has suffered for so long and nobody came to the help, I don't need the permission from anybody. <laughs> to do what we have to do to protect ourselves. I will say it in broad daylight. I have said it to those who matter in this problem. And that's what is going to happen. You, 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 can, you go home, sleep, you know, don't do anything. There will be nothing crossing this borders of this small country of ours. If it, anybody attempts, <laughs> now, now there comes the Eastern Congo conflict as, as such. One, You try to do some research, do some inquiries, you do some intelligence. Rwanda did not in any way create this war that is happening in Eastern Congo. You, you, for me, I'm giving you a fact. Go and investigate and prove me wrong. Rwanda never got involved in starting this fighting that has happened in Eastern Kong. But with time, there has been an effort to actually make it our war. That we are the ones who started it. Over time, this is what has happened. Maybe somebody thought they were being smart, and they thought that was the, end, uh, the way to end the M23 problem, which was there in 2012, by, because there is ethnic, ethnic cleansing, pushing 
these Tutsis to Rwanda to belong there because that's where they belong. And uh, Kagame is a Tutsi, he's the president of Rwanda. Let, 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 let them go and join their, their president. This is what is behind it. One time uh, we, we, we had a meeting and we were having an argument with the leaders. And, and of course there was a contradiction in some of these people's argument. I asked specifically, I said, and that's that one responsible for Congo. I said, we are not going to address anything unless you come out clearly to tell us facts about the situation. I asked him, I said, are these people in M23 Congolese or not? And he said to me, and there were other leaders in the meeting, that absolutely, these are Congolese. Then he came out to say that he has, in fact, even openly talked about it. I think when he was in the US or UK, I don't remember what he said, that he came out and said it. So he was confirming that these are Congolese. I said, fine. So how do they become our problem? How do they become Rwanda's problem? I also asked him, I said, do you know when, when these people, the group that started this fighting, do you know where they came from? In fact, before he answered, the president of the country where they came from is the one who said it. He said, yeah, no, 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 actually they came from, uh, this man refused to solve their problems and they decided to cross the border and go back where they belong. So I then asked him again, I said, so how do you, how do you keep associating Rwanda with this problem? I even asked him, I said, why did you the other day bomb our territory because they had been uh, sharing with artillery, have artillery across the border onto our territory in, in Kinigi. There are people here who know it. I said, why? why what, do you, what are you doing? What do you want? And he just said, no, but this, you know, they should go back. I said, go back away. <laughs> Those who came here, uh, they were about between 500 and 600 when they ran away on 2013, 2012, 2013. There are those who crossed and came here, about between 500 and 600 fighters with their arms. What we did, we put them in a camp uh, in uh, what is this former Kibungu? Eh? Ngoma areas. That's why I put them as refuge. And we removed the arms, actually handed them back, handed back the arms to government in Kinshasa. This they know, they can't even deny. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid Debate, with your speaker, Andrew Irumba Katusa. So, here we go, in simple terms, SADAC deployment in Eastern Congo. Will it succeed where ESC failed? Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid Debate, with your speaker, Andrew Irumba Katusa. Um, when we think of, uh, of the east of Congo, I think the first feelings that comes is a feeling of sadness. Uh, we're speaking first of, uh, before we start speaking of South African army or Malawi army or 
Rwandan's army or rebels, we speak first of uh, 5.5 million people that have been displaced. 5.5 million people, this is more than in a country like Swatini, this is more than a country like Lesotho, this is more like a lot of countries that we all know. So this is a huge amount of people that right now are displaced. And when we, felt, when we have those conversations, we're not only speaking of politics and geopolitics, we speak first of those people that right now do not sleep where they come from, where they are born, because they have been pushed out, they have been kicked out. Right? What's happening also in the east of Congo today, we're not really going to engage with that question, but I want everyone to remind and to keep in mind that the amount of minerals available in that region of the world and the need for many, many economic forces to get those minerals out so they develop their, their very own businesses, right? We're thinking of the business of battery for Tesla, for instance. We're speaking of the business of micro cards and micro um, that they use in computers and new, uh, and new, new, uh, new cars. All of those minerals, a lot of those minerals are from the continent and especially from the south of Congo and the east of Congo and all of what we're going to talk about today cannot be thought without this background. Okay, so we have to be, we have to be clear. Now coming to, coming to the, the question of, uh, of the static deployment of the, in the region and uh, what happened to the East African community. I think I want to state also clearly like a last point, and that would also be my conclusion, but I want to say it here. My personal belief and, and what I got from my research and from researching not only Congo, but researching on different places on the continent is that only Congolese will liberate themselves from the forces that occupy their land. That's my personal convictions. I think this is also what's happening in West Africa right now, in Burkina Faso, in Mali. Uh, people are tired of foreign armies, uh, they want to liberate themselves. And the best result, the best military result that we have are always when the youth get involved, when the, the nations get together, and not when we receive um, foreign nations or foreign, foreign armies. So I personally do not believe that the end of the Congo crisis that have started since 1994 is going to be uh, done and finished now with the SADC deployment in East, Af in East of Congo. We have to say that, um, I want to, sp I will start with a... So did, you hear, did I hear you properly, you said that the, 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 the problem of Congo is going to be solved by Congolese. That's the only way. That is the only way. And it will be a political solution, a military solution first and a political solution after. We, 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 we cannot expect uh, foreigners to come and, and sort out Congolese issues because that has happened since 1994 and so far no result. So therefore you don't think Sadat is going to do any good? I will try to explain why. I will try to explain why. I don't think they're going to do bad, but I think like until Congo mobilizes its own people. And if you know Congolese, you know they're tired of being occupied. Any Congolese in Uganda, that you're going to meet in Uganda and Congo, wherever around the world, they will tell you they, that has to stop. That have to stop. And many Congolese are right now ready to fight. The problem is that they might not have the equipment, they, have not, they might not be uh, trained. But uh, I want to come back with a timeline of the event. I will, I will answer this presentation first with a, a strong timeline of the event, then asking ourselves why did East Africa fail, and then we will conclude by what can the SADC offer, right? And I will let everyone decide whatever they think is going to help the, the Congolese and help the situations. When we go on the Thailand of event, as I said in my introduction already, like where do we start? Where do we start with this problem? Do we start with Belgium colonialism that established those borders? Do we start with, do we start with uh, the genocide in 1994 that pushed millions of people around? Or do we even start in 20th century where thousands of Tutsi moved around uh, with their cars between the Congo, Ituri, Kivu, and all those places? It's, it's quite difficult to pinpoint. Where do, we, where do we start to understand this problem, right? So I want to start with only last year. Last year, uh, a bit uh, less than last year, uh, April 2023, there were, people were trying to reach a political agreement. And if we are here today, it's because they failed. The political agreement has failed. The agreement of peace talk in Nairobi, peace talk in Luanda, same, same months, both of them failed. And they failed exactly because of what we saw on, on, on the show just before. They felt because Kagame is not about to give up. Kagame is here to stay, and it seems like he is not about to give up to support the M23. So when we think of, when we think of this, we, we have to remember that this, this is really clear for a lot of people. 
and including the president of Congo right now, Felix Tshisekedi, right? Tshisekedi in December was being re-elected. And his re-election is highly important here because many, many Congolese believe that the East African community was not fighting M23 on purpose. Whatever they were right or wrong, it's not for us to decide. But what is clear is that the MT3, M23 didn't get weakened by the situation. The M23 wasn't like slowing, slowing down. Um, it has in 2013, that was like already 11 years ago, and the MONUSCO was fighting properly, and then he pushed them and Kagame to go on political talk and to impose a solution. Right now, if there's no political talk, it's because the movement is really strong, military talking. He's handling the situation. He's not scared. And what we see and what we're going to see just um, after is that this situation has created like a vacuum of power. The East African troops have left and the South African troops, Southern African troops, but mainly with South Africans leading the, leading the, the talk, um, have, have, have not fully yet to come. And so what it does is it shows that the M23 is really strong on the ground. And as we speak, if there's no political solution, it's only because the M23 is really strong on the ground. Can, what, what did the East Africa decided to, to come to that situation one year ago? It decided to come to the situation because it opened Congo and DRC to East African community. So the conversation was about making sure that DRC entered the East African community, and in exchange of that, the, the East African will send their army and sort out the problem of the East, right? That's what was the agreement at the time. It never happened because basically the Kenyan forces were never really keen to, to, to fight. And, and they were, most of the contingents were Kenyans and the leadership was, was Kenyan here. And at the end of the day, they were not so keen to fight. They were not so interested in fighting, they were more interested in pushing the M23 outside of certain like big populated era. And they were not proper, proper fight. And that has been reported by many Congolese. Congolese saw that. Congolese saw that the, the, the East African soldiers were staying on their heels, they were monitoring the situations, probably doing a lot of intelligence work but not sorting out the problems. So Felix Tshisekedi was in an election and he decided, no, we need to make sure that this, this stop. That's why he called for the Sadek people and, and in the summit of Vinduk that you spoke about. The South African troops arrived in, in, towards January. They came with Tanzanian troops and with Malawian troops, right? So we're speaking of 5,000 soldiers from South Africa, Tanzania, Malawi, half a billion dollars of budget, $554 million of budget. And we will remember that numbers because this is key. Who is going to pay for that? That is a big question on, on the unanswered right now. Um, SADC has 16 members. Only three army decide to join. Why? Because that was an urgent call. That was Chisekedi trying to make sure that he answered his population's needs at the moment of the election. He said, no, we're kicking the East Africans, but we replace them by Southern Africans that are stronger. That's the message that the president has tried to pass to his people. Was it true? What do you think? Do you think South Africans are really stronger than Kenyan's army? Do you think the South African fighters are, are so highly trained that they, they can defeat people that are on the ground since 1994? Negative. Negative. Negative, and I totally agree, I totally agree with that. And one evidence, and to answer the question that we have asked today, static deployment in east of Congo, will it succeed where East Africa failed? The answer is to be found in Mozambique. And that's where as Pan-African, we are one, one, how to say that in English, one, one head ahead. We see further. We see further because we know the continent. And when we know the continent, we know there's a conflict in north of Mozambique, in Cabo Delgado, right? And this conflict is handled by who? Sadek troops. And so far, have you seen that the conflict has stopped? No. What we have heard, uh, for those that follow the closely, and especially in Southern Africa, they follow it really closely, what happened is that Islamic State backed up uh, rebels, that's kind of the situations, uh, being, uh, are going to Sadek control spaces in Mozambique because they know the soldiers are not gonna fight them. And why do they know that? because the soldiers are underpaid. Some soldiers don't receive the equipment, some other soldiers haven't been paid since months. Why? Because SADC do not have the budget to keep that military missions. And I add, adding to that, that Mozambique believe that SADC soldiers aren't so strong. The real strong soldier on the ground in Mozambique are who? Rwandans. Rwandans are right now 
in Mozambique, and they are known as being the best soldiers in the ground. What does it mean now? It means that South Africa, that doesn't have the money for this particular mission, and the SADC in general is underfunded when it comes to, to, to military missions. And most military missions are really expensive. We have also have to say, those are big numbers. Uh, I have $554 million, those are big numbers. So, what's happening in, in Mozambique? The South African are living. The South African are living and the SADC is living. Slowly but surely, the South African will live by June. And in my, in my, in my uh, research opinions, from what I understand, the South African army is not uh, ready to, to fight and will probably, uh, they, will, they will probably be uh, defeated on the battleground. Last evidence to conclude is that Paul Kagame and, and the African National Congress have, as I said, like a lot of problems. The Rwanda and South Africans, I don't think they have problems, but their president have problems. And Paul Kagame knows that Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa, is about to get re-elected. He's seeking for an election. And what does he want? Who is that? Ramaphosa. Ramaphosa, there's an election in South Africa this year, uh. Uh, April, like uh, per tradition. Mm. And so what is likely to happen mm. is that a lot of South Africans are going to get killed in the next two to three months. Mm -hmm. Because the M23 and the Rwandans are targeting them, especially in the Tanzanian, Malawi, and, and South African troops, because they know South Africa and Cyril Ramaphosa himself cannot afford to welcome dead soldiers every week. He's not going to wait in Pretoria for the dead soldiers to come from Congo. Like South Africans will not, will not be happy about that. And there's an election coming, so it's challenging by the opposition. The opposition said, don't go to Congo, this is useless. And Ramaphosa said, we're going. And then now we have dead soldiers coming back to South Africa. That's a big, pro a big political problem for him. So I hope you all understand that the conflict is happening right now. And in the next weeks, most probably a lot will happen. On, on the, personally, I think you have all understood that I'm on the side of the 6.4 million refugee, Congolese refugee, and I believe that their problem um, will not be sorted soon. And I believe that only um, national mobilizations with army involving young people that are really in that trade will take back the East of Congo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid Debate, with your speaker, Andrew Irumba Katusha. Good evening, uh, comrades. Comrade mm. uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mm. I seek permission to historize the program of DRC in order for us to get uh, a better grasp of why exactly Congo is at the point at which it is. Yes, go. Mr. Speaker, sir. Yes, go. By uh, the early years that uh, Congo was forming, we had uh, Congo under the direct administration of the one man called Robert II, who had covered the country as a private uh, empire. No. Immediately after he had left, he was to hand over this particular piece of land, massive as it is, to his country called Belgium, which is as small as uh, probably uh, a small piece of uh, Uganda, or a rough, roughly around that, that there. And uh, he could have ruled for close to 30 or so years, and uh, DRC was also governed directly by Belgium for roughly around uh, also 30 years. And when uh, the DRC now, we talk about former Congo, was getting a semblance of leadership in uh, the departed uh, Comrade Patrice Emir Lumumba, he was immediately assassinated by the combination of CIA and uh, the Belgian government. Actually, in a, in a documentary, Mobutu, mm. two people confessed. One was an American, another one was, uh, was a Belgian. And the Belgian said, I took a tooth. He went with the tooth. The tooth of who? 
Numbers two. Which was I, I showed them returning it yes. last year. So they confessed. Yeah. And they were proud. As you said, they classified the archive. And so the leader of the CIA in Africa at the time that the, the office was in Ghana, uh, wrote a book and he explained the why and the how they wanted to kill Lumumba and he admitted that the CIA did make a plot with the Belgium to kill Lumumba. So we have all evidence from the... What's the name of the book, Comrade Lisa? It's called White Malice. Huh? White Malice. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, you will appreciate that uh, we value this program very much and uh, before we come here, mm. we have absolutely... They wanted, they wanted to cross Very good very information. Good, yeah, right. mm. And we have it on good record. Good. Uh, so Mr. Speaker, sir, therefore, when uh, the death of Patrice Emery Lumumba occurred and he was, re he was replaced by Koku Wazapanga Mubutu Seseko, mm. who was directly a puppet of the West, it was allegedly it was he, he was a puppet of the West because they yeah, purposely mm. purposely put them yeah. put him there. And again, in the declassified information of CIA, they admit that they purposely pa pa packaged Seseko Mobutu was a banger for purposes of doing the onus of exploiting DRC on their behalf. So it yes. is, again, information on good record. Mr. Speaker, sir, from there, the DRC was characterized by poor governance, there was political discord, and it became a beehive of so many rebel outfits because they could not easily be governed. I also do not buy into the reasoning that DRC could not be governed simply because it is a huge country. Mr. Speaker, sir, the fact that we had the poor political climate in DRC created a fatal climate for the rebel activities who up to now, the numbers have been growing, including but not limited to M23 and FDR rebels. Why do I single out the two? It is the duty of the Pan-African movement and all the Pan-Africans across the board to recognize the fact that it is a historical fact that, for instance, the Wanyamurengi, who are populating the M23 are possibly with features and characteristics of their cousins in Rwanda and Burundi, but they are actually Congolese. Mr. Speaker, sir, I also want to share with the comrades here that the problem we have has always, including, for instance, the mandate of the EYAKA, ESC forces has always been the limitation. What is the nature? What is the distance? What is the, 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 the nature, the character of the mandate that is given to the forces who come to provide the peace in DRC? Save for the special arrangement that Uganda has with DRC, for instance, the standby force called EYAKA, the mandate was simply not extending to engaging in a direct military confrontation, conventional or otherwise. Unfortunately, the expectations of the regime of Chisekedi were that they should go in face-to-face -face combat with M23. When that was not forthcoming, he looked at them as a failed force who were not going to give him what he wanted and the, at the expiry of their one year, he didn't renew and he asked them out when he is the very person who had asked them in. Yes, so because said, he asked them to come and solve a problem, some of the, some of the sons of the president started saying these are our brothers, but they have called it to be a problem. Now you're calling that problem your brother. How could, they, how could they believe in you now? But as long as the mandate of the peacekeeping mission, including the, 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 the SADC forces that have been deployed, 
does not extend to face-to-face -face combat, looking for the rebels wherever they are and attacking them to uproot them, it is going to become very difficult for the Sadak forces to provide anything different from what the Iyaka forces have been providing. I also want to say that it is going to be a little bit, because they seem, I was listening to my brother, Rafa uh, Rutati here, and I agree with him. As long as South Africa is coming under the auspices of Sada, along with Said Tanzania and Marawi, but particularly South Africa, to settle the scores for Rwanda having sponsored the mercenaries who have attempted the lives to eliminate some of the refugees emanating from Rwanda, which is actually true also, because they have not denied anyone. Uh, intelligence information has shown that they are the ones who are sponsoring that activity. If that is why they are coming to fight a war in DRC, it is going to be very difficult for them because it will end up becoming a direct war between South Africa, not the organization that has given them a mandate, and Rwanda. And we are not going to get the desired results. I want also to state, Finally. as I conclude, that I had wanted my brother to look at uh, South Africa is using in this entire mission as a country, is using 100, well over 150 million dollars. Yet, in the Republic of South Africa, we have got them behaving like Nigeria, using alternative energy in generators. All the cities, save for Pretoria, they have got generators running. Sometimes they run out of petrol or diesel, and the entire city, Johannesburg, is like on a fire brigade kind of mission. The, the unemployment is on the rise. Do they have the amount of money required to start moving into the a kind of big brother? rendering a helping hand to a weak brother. I wanted a comment on that. Mr. Speaker, sir, mm. I also wanted a comment on uh, whether it is not fair for Rwanda to have a sympathetic uh, uh, eye and to render a helping arm to a force, be it M23, if they can be helped in fighting the FDR, who is a rebel outfit, where out to take the government out of Chikari? Don't they have that right? Mr. Speaker, sir, hey. Sada forces repressing, because it is, it is unfair for us to say that Sada forces have repressed Ayaka forces. When actually, officially, Sada forces are repressing the UN forces. Because consistently, Chisekedi called for the elimination of UN forces, and we very well know that the mandate of the Yaka forces had lapsed, but for the UN, he called for their expulsion, and that's what happened, and he brought in the SADAC forces. I thank you so much. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid Debate, with your speaker, Andrew Irumba Katusha. Mr. Chairman, the political nomenclature of uh, DRC, Mm. necessitated the deployment of SADAC forces with the intent of restoring peace and security in DRC. We are very much aware that uh, there has been increased uh, conflicts and instability caused by the resurgence of armed groups and terrorists in the DRC. As you gave the introductory remarks when you are opening this debate, you indeed gave information that there was an extraordinary summit of heads of state and government held in Windhoek, Namibia, uh, approved by SADAC regional force from Malawi, South Africa, mm. and Tanzania, to work with uh, further forces Correct. to fight armed groups operating in Eastern DRC. Mm. Now, the efforts of Sada purposely 
was to achieve lasting peace and stability. Mm. Which in accordance with the Sadaka Mutual uh, Defense Pact emphasizes what we call collective defense, uh, self-defense. That is according to the pact. Now, why has East African uh, Community Forces stand by force? Stand by force. Yes. East African stand by force. Yes. Mm. Has it performed to the expectations of the Congolese or not? Now, on several occasions, the East African Committee uh, Standby Force has taken over some areas previously uh, occupied by M23. But it has so far failed to end the conflict. And we have seen massive demonstrations in towns like Goma, North Kivu, and uh, other towns over the ESC deployment. But remember there, is, there are UN forces that have stayed there for over 20 years, there. But the difference in security terms, the difference is the similarity. There's nothing that has changed, over despite the fact that... Over 35 years. Yes, over 35. But the difference is the similarity. Hey. There's nothing that has changed. The UN forces are there. They have added on the, the East African standby force, but the war is still continuing. People are, you know, the Congolese now took up arms and started demonstrating in towns in Goma. Killing has become a competitive activity. Mm. Human rights abuses, raping. Mm. See, so it is upon that that uh, the DRC has accused some of the neighboring uh, countries mm. for fearing the conflict. And the Macu, some of the countries that are fearing the conflict constitute uh, ES standby force. Mm. Now, you cannot, you, cannot, uh, you cannot blame a monkey. A monkey cannot play tricks on a, on a, on a, on a babu. Because they are all apps. <laughs> they belong in the apps group. <laughs> so if you are sending a, 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 yes, AFC <laughs> standby force, yet they are part of the group that are causing problems. They are part of the problem. They are part of the problem. They are, for them, their mission is not to maintain lasting peace and stability. Mm. Now, we are saying that uh, some member states, the ESC, uh, forming the ESC standby force, are accused of forming even militia groups. You know? So I, I think the most important thing is that uh, Sada, we, we, we want Sada to come in and probably also start where if the ASC fails because of ABCD. Mm. Yes, Sada has to take over because it is well known that uh, the, the, the countries of the ESC standby force that could have solved the problem is again has become part of the problem. And considering the geographical uh, terrain of the country of, of PRC. So this is not likely to stop unless if the standby force, another standby force headed by Sada. Let us try this in South Africa. Because what I know is that in terms of the military might, I think Sadat can do much more than ES standby force. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Comrade. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan African Parliament, the Pan African Pyramid debate with your. Uh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> about M23. They are accusing, yeah, they are accusing Kagame of aiding M M23. What is M23? By the way, do we know the history of Congo? Do we? We don't. People are saying the conflict started in 1994, 1998. No, it started. I think what we are facing now started in 1961 when they killed Lumumba, who was popular and was capable of 
galvanizing all the Congolese into one body mm. and develop Congo. Mm. Unfortunately for him, he was emotional. That's the trouble with young people. Because he started something like that. He was emotional. He didn't understand the challenges he had. So he easily had himself over to the enemy. He was warned and even escaped. Huh? Mm. But because he was a popular, he went holding rallies everywhere. Rallies. So they chased him and captured him. Very careless man. He? Yes. Mm. No, he was more blazing. Those. He was careless. I want, you see, the president said one time when he was accused of taking his daughter to German. To German he said, How can I donate myself, my children, to my enemies? No. And the president said, you see, we don't quote this man. We should be quoting the president. Because it is not, he is the only person in Africa who has ever overthrown a government using a few guns. He said, when you fall sick during a revolution, it is a criminal. You should not be falling sick because you are delaying, or if you die, then there will be a vacuum. Not easy to replace. But sick, falling sick is, is not somebody's choice. As a revolutionary, you should fall sick if it is inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> but you should not fall sick. You are in the forest. Mosquitoes feasting on you. Find a way. You should not. Find a way. Find a way. So, the Congo we are talking about. Are you being a real? Now, yes. now the M23. Let's understand these people who are fighting for their survival. They have an existential threat. Mm. The Nyamulenge are the Bafumbira of Uganda. Mm. Imagine Uganda say that the Bafumbira should go back to Rwanda. Where? That's their home. The Nyamulenge, in fact, Rwanda was a big country, kingdom, I think. But when they were when the colonists were making borders, they were powerful. They had the brains, or else were just there dancing, you know, jumping with the whatever. Not knowing the challenges that was coming. They cut a piece of Rwanda and put it in Congo, the Banyomorengi. Even Bunyoro lost the, Bar the Barega. The Barega, that is Bunyoro, actually Kabarega was a child of a Murega woman. And that was Bunyoro, yes. The Varenga and the Varusu. The Varenga, the Hema, that was Bunyoro. Yes. We don't know our history. <laughs> so, so, the Banyamulenge are Banyarwanda occupying their land, their ancestral land, which is part of Congo. However, Kisekedi, who was brought up in Belgium, who I doubt whether even knows That's the border really between nice. Uganda and the Congo. His objective is to throw them away. His objective, so the victory, Mr. Chairman, is throwing the Banyamulenge away from Congo into Rwanda. That's impossible. That's unacceptable. You, nobody can accept that. And the, the East African community did, did not, according to many people, did not succeed in its submission but it actually succeeded depending given their mandate. Mm. They were not peace enforcers, mm. they were peacekeepers. The, the East African stand by force. Yes. Yes. It so, was a peace so they achieved force. They achieved. They They achieved. However, Kisekedi was telling them to attack. Yeah. How do you attack? For them they wanted to, to solve the problem. They by, by peaceful means. No, you cannot attack Congolese. How? Because attacking Congolese, what he was telling these people was to throw them into Rwanda. That's unacceptable. Even soldiers, once given wrong commands, they are supposed to refuse them. And they refused. So they did not fail. It is Kisekedi who failed. To, to differentiate. Now, he goes, it. now he goes to Sadak, you said something like self, collective self-defense? Yes. And the, you mm. see, when, one time we were talking about African solutions, African, African, African problems, African, African solutions. solutions. Yes. I don't think so. 
Mm. These solutions may be made by Africans, but they are European solutions. Eh. Yes. Mm -hmm. African solutions are controlled, governed by Ubuntu. In Uganda, we call it Ubuntu. 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 Humanity. Mm. That's how African solutions of this kind are done. So, when you talk of collective self-defense, this is a NATO type of slogan. It's not Africa. Mm. You mean, if they attack another one, you, you are defending you, you don't find out why? In the case of, in the case of Congo, Congo is not under attack. Congo is just being mismanaged by the president. So, yes. But the reality is that let us be sincere. Let us be sincere. Congo has over 300 rebel groups. Who is facilitating these rebel groups? If you are saying they are not under attack. Okay. Are they being facilitated Mr. Speaker, by themselves? Mr. Speaker, between 1986 yes. and 2000, mm. Uganda had how many global groups? There were over 10. Okay, yes, I agree. Do we we manage them? Them? Yes, I'm going to Mr. Speaker, Let's we managed them. Let's pay attention. And we are at peace. Even then, Uganda was running perfectly. That's what Congo should be doing. Oh, how do we do? How do we do it? We were negotiating. You know, Actually, so, some of the people who were in the rebel groups yes, are now in the Seminus government. Exactly. So we, how do we do it? As we were fighting, we were talking. Mm. That's what Kisegeti should be doing. Congo is not under attack. Okay. Congo is mismanaged. If there is anybody attacking us, if there is anybody attacking Congo, mm. it is the UN. Political virtue. UN. Yes. Is attacking Congo? Yes, because the UN has been found with gold yeah. in its drones. Falling up from the sky. So, mm. finally, mm. the solution to this is one, as Pan African, now I'm talking as a Pan Africanist, as Pan Africanists, let understand, in fact, Congo mm. is the heart of Africa. It is the stability of Congo will lead to the economic emancipation of Africa. And Uganda Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan African Parliament, the Pan African Pyramid debate with your. So, the Democratic Republic of Congo is considered the richest country in the whole world in terms of natural resources. So, most of these minerals are untapped and they are estimated to be worth. 24 trillion United States dollars. 24? Trillion United States dollars. Why? What are we talking about here? That's the mineral wealth estimates of the DRC. Of Congo. Of Congo, yeah. Is es that... Estimates. Yeah, estimates. 24 trillion. So, which makes it the richest country in the whole world, richer than the United States or United Kingdom of France. So, I will invoke an African proverb. Mm. Uh, the man. Which goes, the man who marries a beautiful woman and that man who plants maize by the roadside, they have got a common problem. And this is the problem of the Congo, it being one of the richest countries in the whole world. Yes. So that man who marries a beautiful woman, so many other men would want that, ma that woman. The same applies to that farmer with maize by the roadside. Everyone would want to pick that maize. So, uh, on this topic, uh, mm. startup deployment in the Congo, will it succeed where the ESC failed? I'm mm. um, of the view that, like the others before it, the ESC, the UN, is it Monius? Mm. This one is also likely to fail. Yes, likely to fail because what Congo actually is doing, mm. they are trying to pass on, they get their problems to other parties. You know, the man who's brought maize by the roadside, you know, he has to make sure he keeps his maize safe. Mm. That man who has married a beautiful wife, he has to make sure no other man, you know, takes away his wife. Mm. What Congo is doing is passing on his problems, and that's where uh, his problems come from. Mm. So, from the history, you will see there have been a scale of plunder. Uh, the Congo has had one of the worst colonial experiences, you know, under Belgium. Mm. And if you look at the number of people who died actually under the rule of King Leopold, probably actually it surpasses the Holocaust of the Jews. 
This is the biggest Holocaust in the whole world, the death in the Congo. So from that history, it seems that they have lost their self-esteem and they feel like even fighting their own battles, they're trying to give it to other people. The Congo. Yeah, the Congolese. So what happened recently uh, with them asking the Sadaf to come, you know, you know, rebels uh, I think from the eastern side, they are trying to take over that side of Goma, the border city of Goma. They are trying to take it, so that's why they called them in. They called in the Sadaf, Sadaf, sorry. So with that hindsight, uh, the previous uh, speaker, Professor Isaac Kasote, Actually, he said he wishes actually President Museveni was the Congolese president. It wasn't me. Oh. It was the Congolese students who ran me. I said, oh. wish Museveni was Congolese. And I think they are right. Because look at Museveni when he saw things were wrong in his country. He created a rugged up group of people, a rainbow group. He claims he trained seven men. They picked up arms and tried to right their country. So all odds were against them, the NRA. You know, they had the British against them, they had so many things against them, but they triumphed. Another example the Congolese could learn is the Randis. When the current president, is it the PRA, the Forest River, with that rebel group in Rwanda under Kagame, and Rijema picked up arms. So they also, they also had odds against them. So they, I think they only had Uganda as a comrade, all the other people were against them. They had a big imperial power against them as well, France. So these are lessons, uh, the DRC, should pick. So, of course, when you see the M23 rebels, we, we all know as Pan-Africans, there is always someone else fanning the flames. And because of that wealth, over 24 US million, trillion US dollars, everyone wants to pick a piece of that. And some of these vested interests are the ones who are behind the DRC. So, Patrice Lumumba, the founding president, had a big vision for Congo and had he been given chance, Congo probably would have been one of the best countries in the whole world. So, Sadat deployment will likely not succeed. However, it can, if the solutions are vested as Africans, and also as when Africa unites, as to the aspirations of the African Union, uh, the former president of Ghana, founding president, His Excellency Kwame Nkrumah, mm. he said that Africa must unite without necessarily sacrificing our sovereignties, mm. big or small. We come here and we must forge a political union based on defense, foreign affairs, diplomacy, currency, an African military zone, and also an African central bank. And with that in our mindset, if there's a problem in Congo, then it becomes an African problem. Mm. Like what happens in the European Union? Mm. You attack one country, like attack Ukraine, them. then you attack everyone. You have attacked Europe. Yes. Actually, the Congolese are claiming that the West is supporting some other countries or rebel groups. And in Congo, they are pointing the blame mostly to Rwanda, so to the empty, to Rwanda that the West is using Rwanda to back the M23 rebels so that they can come and take away their resources. And when you look at all those and them calling out Sadat, so it, seems, it shows that actually there is a, a case of surrender on the Congolese side. If you look at the political class, the government, you know, they, they, like they have surrendered, you know, to maybe Sadat or the sub forces to come and help them. And with all this, I want to implore a book which was written by Kwame Kuruma. He said actually neo-colonialism is the last stage of imperialism. What we are seeing in Congo, these are some of the last stages of imperialism, the Osage for Kwame Kuruma for us all, so many years back. So to solve the problem of Congo, we need to echo the words of uh, His Excellency Thomas, Thomas Sankara, uh, former president of Burkina Faso, who was murdered. He said, let's make the African market, the market of Africans, Let's produce in Africa, transform in Africa, consume in Africa. Let's produce what we need and consume what we produce instead of stopping. So we need to change mindsets. The Congolese should, not, should stop buying things from former colonial powers, from Belugia, from French, 
And that's what we call powernomics. Once we buy within, create within, then these people who are coming to steal from Congo and other countries, we shall have put the rug from under their feet. Thank you. Thank you. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan African Parliament. Uh, I can first agree that it is very impressive to see how do other people think about what's uh, happening in Eastern Congo mm. and how do you think of Congolese people? So this go, I mean, this war has been happening there since like 30 years, since the Rwandan genocide in 1994. And since that period, in 1996, we saw President Lawrence Kabila chase the, the President Mobutu and uh, the, the allies he had in that period were Rwanda, Uganda, and Burundi. So he be actually he actually broke their alliance and he turned out in, into the war we know today. Um, the fact is uh, what the Congolese people see when it's about that war, the Congolese people see over 10 million of people killed. That's what they see. They see 7 million of people displaced. They see millions of women and girls raped. They see a war going where you see your brother and your sister killed and you have nothing to do. People are really traumatized. That's what they see. And the fact is, Intervention of foreign armies have been happening during all those years. Peace agreement, actually, it's like a cycle of violence. It's like today you have been the oppressed, I mean, the oppressed. Tomorrow you become the oppressor. And it's an, an, it's an ongoing cycle of violence where people are killed. And actually, Congolese, the population, can't now make a difference between the UN mission happening there because it has been there for more than a decade and nothing has been done. The intervention of foreign army are not well perceived in Eastern Congo because the population have very bad experiences with the foreign army. Let me say, I remember Professor was talking about Uganda. I remember in 1999, the Ugandan army and the Rwandan army they fought on the Congolese land in Kisangani, and people were killed. The, and those are memories we have about the foreign army. I'm sure you also have memories of some soldiers in Uganda who stole your timber. <laughs> As oh, you wind up. All those, all those are situations. In conclusion. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so in conclusion, yeah. actually, maybe uh, you are talking about the uh, East African region, East African uh, community region, of course, what they need, what mm. can they do, maybe different, mm. to make sure their mission is, is a success. Mm. So what I think, I remember in 12, uh, in 2012, mm. uh, the, when the M23 took Goma, at that period I was still in Goma, and there was a brigade, we, 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 were, calling, we were calling it the Brigade d'Intervention, there was a, a force, a regional force composed by Tanzanian army, the Malawi and I think the South African with Congolese army. So they fought the M23. It was not about keeping peace, but it was about intervene, intervening in the war. It was about, it was a, an offensive mission. So they Let fought the M23. Intervention. Yeah. They fought the M23 along, I mean, aside to the Congolese army. And I remember it was a, an offensive of around two weeks and the M23 movement actually ran away from the Congolese territory in 2000, in 2012, that, in that period. So nine years, nine years ago, this movement today, the, the M23 we know, was no longer, okay, it, it was not uh, an, acting, strong, mm, yeah, an acting military act, movement. Yeah. Act, military, the movement was, was let me say, um, yeah. defeated, eliminated something like that. Thank so, you. yeah, that's the point. So, what maybe they can do different is to make a, maybe an offensive mission along. Not, not what ESU was doing. It was like, okay, between the M23 and the Congolese army, we make a temple zone, a no man's land, to make, to see if we can make a, we can make a dialogue, maybe a, yes. a dialogue. And that's not the, that's not what Congolese people need. I think that is, 
Thank you, Comrade. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan African Parliament, the Pan African Pyramid debate. Uh, what I was saying about the conflict in Congo, the funny thing is like Congo is very big. Mm. I come, I, I'm not coming from the same town in Pain. And uh, I knew about a lot, like I knew more about the war in Congo when I came in Uganda. Of course, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That is that the funny thing. That the funny thing. <laughs> okay, I know there is there was the war, but not details. And you know, like, I don't know. I, I was not knowing exactly what and happened. And came to Uganda. Exactly. Okay. What I was saying is, uh, I learned about the conflict in Congo late, and I did research. Now, when I was doing researches, I found out. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of powerful people depend on that war. A lot Even, of powerful people depend on that war. Yeah. The little research you did, that's what you concluded with. Yeah. No. The, the research I did, I just found out that with my, my points. And what I saw is the solution for, for the conflicts, it has to come from inside, from Africa. Yeah, from Congolese, from Africans, and because they make it okay. The, the way this, this, the system is, we depend on, we depend too much from the outside. We have the things inside the country, but they can take the same thing, they bring them to the factories, and they sell it again to Congo. We shall be importing the same thing, which is made by our own thing, and we buy it okay. at an expensive oh. price. Okay, thank yeah. you, Comrade. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan African Parliament, the Pan African Pyramid debate. With your a lot has been said. I tried making my research. I've learned a lot from the speakers that were on the podium earlier. I think what we come here to discuss about Sadak has very, very little impact. What we can do about, uh, like, as Pan Africanists, is indoctrinate our young people with pan-Africanism. Indoctrinate people, I, I had someone say that you cannot, you know, tell uh, people who are in Congo right now, who are, let's say probably have their roots in Rwanda, to go back right now, because they know Congo as home. What we need to understand is that, they say unless we develop a central nervous system, we are going nowhere. If I can't feel someone's pain who is in Congo, there's nothing I can do about it. Thank what you. are we doing? So we have young children who are being indoctrinated. These are children who are joining the army. These rebel groups are going to stay there for a time that we can't even talk about, talking about the wars being there for decades. So what are Pan-African is doing? Okay. Indoctrinate the people with the values that you want them to learn. Otherwise, these wars are going to continue up and then there will be nothing that people can do about it. Thank you, Akelo. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid debate. With your thank you so much, comrades. Um, and uh, I want to say thank you for being part of this debate every other Friday. We can follow this debate from 4 to 5 and also on our online YouTube channels, Spy Uganda and the Pan-African Pyramid. My name is Andrew Rumba, but to serve I say now. Free your mind now. Be part of People's Pan-African Parliament, the Pan-African Pyramid Debate. With